Welcome to the Run the Alps Rendezvous with me, Hilary Girardi. I'm your host today and a longtime friend of Run the Alps and an athlete ambassador here. And today we are veering a little bit away from the classic Run the Alps Rendezvous style for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that we are meeting today entirely virtually, and it's not even because of COVID. It's because we are all over the place. Um, but the second reason has to do with our program today. Um, we are having our first annual, we hope, mini virtual Run the Alps trail running film festival. Um, and, you know, Doug, I have actually seen a lot of mountain and trail running films. I have been in some of them. Wow. I've been to festivals. I've emceed some festivals. I was actually just a couple of weeks ago on the jury of a mountain film festival. And I feel like one of the big challenges of making trail running films is kind of like rooted in the activity itself. And I know that we've had a lot of discussions about like the the linguistic challenges of trail running uh, because a lot of the time what we call running is not actually running it's mm -hmm. like hiking or walking and that's something mm -hmm. that can be a little bit hard to make uh interesting for the viewer <laughs> yeah well is is that a cue for me to tease these films because i think in these these three four filmmakers we have uh, really, really good stuff that uh, has brought trail running totally to life and in very different ways too. Um, but it is totally true what you say. Um, and there's one film in particular that you'll see which shares the whole world of trail running uh, such as it is. Um, and, uh, you know, I always think of what our friend Mike Ambrose, uh, where he landed on this, which is, we, we have, you know, schemo, right? Going steadily uphill, taking off skin, skiing fast down, up and down to different paces. Mike always thought trail running here should be called run mo. Um, so maybe we should be calling this the run mo film festival. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's not that catchy, but <laughs> that's kind of what trail running is in the Alps, right? It's, it's run mo. And I think we have we have uh, really good glimpses of that in these in these films. Yeah. Well, I I guess we'll let our viewers uh, decide uh, sort of what the most apt term is to describe these different films. But actually, before we get started and before I in, uh, introduce the rest of the guests, Doug, I did want to have you maybe just talk a little bit about. Um, like, but how did this come to be? What is the Run the, Al Run the Alps uh, Trail Running Film Festival? Well, it's really good we just had lunch together today <laughs> because we talked about this very topic, not because of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, rendezvous, but, uh, you know, we were talking really about what Run the Alps is, which is more than I th I've always thought, always wanted it to be, and I think all of us do at Run the Alps, more than a tour company that just provides trips. And the words I keep uh, coming back to, no strategy, no marketing, no focus groups. It's just like where I ended up was that Run the Alps is, is um, about sharing trail running in the Alps and, and also about celebrating uh, trail running in the Alps. And I think that's kind of our calling, you know? Um, we, we share trail running here through our trips and through uh, content, you know, written, written articles and films and any other way we can think of doing it and we celebrate it. And, um, you know, I always wanted us to sort of, uh, well, and when I first got here over the years, discovered all of these wonderful filmmakers who are hiding out in every corner of the Alps and they're all here now, literally in different corners of the Alps. And um, I'm just really excited that uh, that we, we have the capacity now to be able to, you know, um, support them to take a little bit of time off and to go um, explore their passion for, for trail running and share trail running. So it fits perfectly with, with who Run the Alps is or what Run the Alps is, I think. 
So that was not a marketing pitch, by the way. That's just straight from my heart. (laughs) I think that's how we all feel, right? We totally love this world. Yeah, I think so. And I think that what's cool about the sort of the approach that you've taken for this festival, right, is that, as I said, I think that, you know, when we're out running, we live these really rich experiences, but they can be hard to communicate. And I think that in trying to um, sort of help the genre, if you will, of trail running films or runmo films, uh, <laughs> as it were, uh, get, you know, gain a little esteem, test some things, get off the ground. Um, it's kind of, you know, hopefully going to, you know, sort of allow that genre to continue to build on it on itself and and we can come up with even more really great stuff to to share this experience that we love so much so thank you doug uh for making this happen and thank you for joining us i understand you have a book to write so you're not going to stay with us for the whole long day i'm going to disappear and this is really for for you all to carry on and um i look forward to uh watching the festival online Thanks, Doug. Bye. All right. So now that the boss uh, is gone, uh, we can get to the fun part, which is the film festival part. Um, And so today, I think I, I like to actually say what day it is. It's Tuesday, December 13th. 2022, uh, just because, you know, maybe we'll end up saying things that uh, if somebody watches this in two years, uh, won't be uh, timely at all anymore. But um, so it's mid-December and we are joining you from, I am in France in the Chamonix Valley. I believe we've got Wales and Switzerland. uh, And I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guests. So the first person I'm going to introduce is hailing from Vivi on the shores of Lake Léman, or some people call it Lake, Lake Geneva, uh, Swiss artist and skier, Simon Charrière. You might have to kind of wave, Simon, because... Hello. <laughs> there you go. So Simon has done a lot of cl- collaborations with different brands, uh, including Patagonia, Jobo, Faction Skis, just to name a few of them. Um, and he's especially sensitive to environmental issues, works a lot with Protect Our Winters. Um, and I actually got the opportunity to first meet Simon last year uh, when we were touring around France at the Mountain Mountains on Stage Winter Film Festival. Um, And Simon was there selling a calendar, not hawking a film, which he's doing today. Um, But Simon, how, you know, uh, my understanding is that skiing is really more your main sport. So how did you end up here uh, at a trail running uh, digital virtual film festival? Hmm. Yes, right. Hello. Um, That's a good question. Um, I like, first I like running. And uh, I met Doug uh, months ago while um, we were working on a book project. And uh, the editors asked me to work with Doug and we met in a coffee and it was good, uh, good time. And then uh, we show our works and he told me that uh, he's doing this festival and I show him the a movie I did last year and he asked me to do it. So, that's it. Uh, well, uh, welcome. Uh, yeah. Next up, I want to introduce Milo Zanekia. Am I saying it right? Hello, everybody. You, you nailed it. You said it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so Milo is joining us from Lugano, Switzerland, uh, much closer to the Italian border than the French one. So Simon is close to France. Milo is close to Italy. Milo is a professional photographer, a filmmaker, and an avid adventurer. I believe you once ran 383 kilometers across all of Switzerland um, from Liechtenstein to Montreux. Um, And I also heard the gossip, you know, lately is uh, that you are recently a dad. So uh, (laughs) thanks for making time. How's the parenting life going? It's uh, so far so good. Definitely like a a full on endurance challenge at times, um, but loving every moment of it. Um, (laughs) It's funny how it's like a, a complete shift overnight of what your life can become. And from the sports side of things, I feel like, uh, power hiking with her on on the chest pack is definitely my new 
my new way of life and a whole new form of segments to try and be on mountain, you know, ridges or whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> trying to trying to stay outdoors however I can. Yeah, it's probably a pretty effective, like, you know, like weight training though, right? <laughs> exactly. Yep. And maybe core stabilization once she starts moving a bit more. <laughs> yep. I've tried to kind of run here and there. And then I was like, okay, now I'm going to tame this down a little bit and just stick to the, the hiking and, and see where that goes. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks and welcome, Milo. So finally, um, we have two sort of smiling faces, soon to be smiling faces, uh, together on one screen. And that's Kate Owen and Sam Hill, who are joining us from Wales. And Sam, I believe, is from the Lake District. He's one of Run the Alps guides and photographers. Um, and he's also one of the people can, that can help uh, Run the Alps guests develop a training plan so they can get ready for the different races. He does the PPP. What does that stand for, Sam? Uh, <laughs> Uh, personalized, prep. Um, personalized prep plan yeah um before before coming so uh and then we have kate and kate is an avid storyteller i don't actually know where you're from kate so i can't say um <laughs> But um, she has gotten to work all over the world producing different international nature documentaries. And I know that you guys both uh, were working or, and living in the Alps this summer uh, here in the Chamonix Valley. And now you've left the Alps for the winter. What are you doing up in Wales? Um, nothing for very long. We're coming back to Chamonix in, uh, in January, um, mainly because uh, Kate's tourist visa ran out, so we've had to escape escape um, Schengen, good old Brexit, um, and come <laughs> come back to the UK for a for a month just to reset all that. All right. Well, hopefully by Goodbye. the time you get by the time you get back, there'll be some snow. <laughs> I think Sam would kill me if it had gone by then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it could be gone as soon as tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, they're calling for the the uh, snow to turn to rain pretty soon. But for for your sake, I and for all of our sakes, I really hope that it it sticks around. Um, so now that we know who is going to be on the show, I'm going to explain quickly sort of how this is going to work. We've got three films to present, one by each of our filmmaker or filmmaker duos. Um, I'll sort of give a real quick introduction to each of those films. And then after the film, we'll watch it. And then afterwards, there'll be a little Q&A amongst filmmakers uh, before we move on to the next one. Uh, so the first film we're going to do, we'll start off with uh, Simon Charrier's film, which is called Magic Shoes um, and is the only animated film of the show, which makes sense because um, whereas Milo and, and uh, Sam Kate are maybe more behind a camera. Simon is the one with a, a pen in hand all the time. Um, it's a short, playful film, about two minutes long, um, and gives us a little peek into the life of our trail running shoes. So let's give it a watch. So I hope that you all enjoyed Magic Shoes by Simon Charrier. Um, Simon, usually you are drawing like, you know, sort of static images. Uh, what is it like to make a film instead of uh, something that isn't going to move? Ah, um, yeah, so I try always when I do static drawing to put movement in it, to feel like a skier or a runner or something like that someone who's doing sports or something else, but doing animation uh, is really funny because you can make the drawing alive and it move. So I try to do it. <laughs> well, I think it comes across pretty well. Um, and you did mention to me that you had a little hiccup uh, a little problem in the process of making this film. Uh, you had to do it twice. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. I did it uh, and was quite at the end. And then the, I, had, 
I was working with a new program and I was not, I'm not so good with technology and stuff like that. And then everything was lost. And I tried to find it with the help center and they told me it was wrong to put on this button and I did it again. And it was new ideas and I did it a bit better, I think, I hope. <laughs> well, it's pretty wonderful. Uh, how about, does anybody else have a question for Simon? Yeah, so you mentioned about um, doing it on a program. So you don't you don't kind of animate on, on paper or do you draw on paper first before you do it on, do you do it on a tablet or something like this? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so I draw on paper with uh, this pencil. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I do all the drawing, all the movements on paper, and then I scan the, the drawings, and then I put it on some programs. And then I, yeah, I try to do, to do it with the computer at the end to make the move and stuff. So is it almost like making like a flip book at first, and then you have to put it in into the program? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I drew the uh, I drew the move, and then uh, every move. So the computer can help also to move a bit some piece. And then I draw a landscape, and I make the things moving together. So without kind of given that you had to do it twice, let's just forget about that bit. How how long does one um, two minute film take you to animate? Uh, uh, I don't know uh, because uh, when you're drawing, the time is not real but uh, <laughs> uh it took me from yeah i think one completely one week i think i don't know Do you, I, uh, I will say that i've seen simon draw and he can draw extraordinarily quickly but i imagine it takes some time also to come up with the idea <laughs> yeah also yeah i need time to re the research is taking some time so, yeah I don't know are exactly there, the time it takes. Are there moments where you do a whole sequence, you come up with a drawing and you're like, that scene doesn't work? Like as filmmakers, I can take a shot and then throw it away and post, like, oh, that doesn't fit the edit. Um, what's that like for you? Yeah, it's quite uh, perhaps the same feeling, but I try some ideas and then I'm like, okay, that's not good. And I'm doing another, And but each stuff I do is doing, an, uh, is giving an idea for the next step. Love it. And I try to prepare the sequence and the storyboard good before. <laughs> <laughs> so to that end, I, I we talked a little bit the other day about what message I took from the film. And I was wondering if you wanted to share at all, you know, what your thoughts were behind the story and what message you might like to, to convey. It depends of the feeling of each spectator, but uh, me, my intention were to talk about a pair of shoes, old one. Sometimes we love those old pair of shoes, but some days we have to, well, we think we have to put him in a dustbin through the way. So, and then the message was that the shoes can come alive again with some magic stuff in this case and she will come back home and she perhaps don't throw the, the shoes away and they can use be used. What what was the magic thing? Was it a crystal? Yes. <laughs> kryptonite. Hey, kryptonite. I, I actually, I like that because in some ways that connects it to the Alps because uh, there are a lot of crystal hunters here in the Alps as well. Sure. Yeah, this is the lost crystal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. Bill, I don't know if I believe someone would throw it in the dustbin. <laughs> yeah, but you never know what sometimes, yeah. It's something <laughs> happened in life sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that film and that really great idea. Uh, I love the, the idea of shoes getting a, a second life, even if they have to seize it themselves. The second film that we're going to watch um, is also giving voice to the voiceless, if you will. And uh, in this case, the voiceless character is the Rummy Alps mascot, 
Isabella Izzy Mayer. And I don't really want to say too much about it since I think the film and Izzy herself uh, says it all. Um, it's actually the only film in our little um, festival here that has speaking in it. Um, and so I'd love to just jump right into it uh, to watch uh, Izzy, Ambassador of Joy uh, by Media Untamed, AKA Kate Owen and Sam Hill. Well, what an adventure that was with Izzy. So I have to ask though, those of us who know Run the Alps pretty well also know Izzy pretty well. And she's actually never mentioned to me that she wanted to do a film project. Um, uh, Kate, you uh, directed and produced it. Was this, was this your idea or did she come to you? Well, I, I say a bit of both. <laughs> um, yeah, I think having spent some time with Izzy over the winter and then in the summer um she's just she's such a character and um when Doug mentioned that he wanted to do a film festival I was like I think I've got an idea um and it's gonna it's gonna be about Izzy uh because her yeah her character just needs kind of telling and um yeah <laughs> you can't help but fall in love with her for sure Sam I think that you did a lot of the filming I'm a little bit curious about some of your follow cam video like that slow motion because she was hauling how did that how did that go down I got no it was it was super hard so the only way we could really get Izzy to I mean, firstly never work with animals <laughs> <laughs> it's a total nightmare and the only way we could get her to to run kind of off the lead was one person off camera holding on to her and then Doug usually uh, off camera further up the trail shouting her and then I would just have to kind of slot in and, mm -hmm. and follow her but she wouldn't just kind of trot nice and mellow she would yeah totally just zoom um, she has one speed and, and that's like full full pelt <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's like it's a bit frustrating because some of the shots we really like but um even on a gimbal uh, run it when you're having to sprint full speed they just get really shaky um and we tried to do it with a drone as well but she's kind of too unpredictable to get a smooth shot with a drone that fast um so yeah it was it took a lot of takes <laughs> <laughs> yeah that seems like it would be a serious challenge i just wanted to say that i loved it and i loved the message um this is less of a question and more of just a uh, it's awesome to see trail running from like a different perspective like that. And I know you put a lot of effort into not just the shots. Like I imagine that's a total nightmare. That was all I was thinking about half the time. <laughs> and then, you know, the, the voiceover that you came up with, I think is really important. And it's an awesome reminder for me as well, because I do think I'm often the distracted guy in the mountains. Like, okay, you know, worrying about my pace or taking the picture or thinking about a future film, whatever it is. So I just wanted to say awesome work. And yeah, I realized how much work went into that. I think like the original, I think the original idea was to make it much more of a, like a, a skit on kind of the really serious trail running films that you get um, and to kind of do all the same things, but from her perspective. But then talking to Doug a bit more about kind of like her kind of her character and stuff, it kind of made more sense to kind of make it a bit more meaningful um, and capture the idea that, you know, when a dog, when Ezzy goes out running, she doesn't care about anything about you know she doesn't have a watch she doesn't care about what the weather is she just wants to go out and she loves every single run and I feel like it's something that you forget you start off and your kids doing that and then as you get older you get so serious about running and uh, she's just a good reminder I think of how you should run <laughs> God, yeah. That that reminds me a little bit of our uh, of Brendan Leonard, uh, aka Semi Rad on uh, on the Instagram made a calendar that it it said your dog's calendar, and every single day was marked the best day of my life, the best day of my life, the best day of my life, <laughs> and I I definitely got that sense from from Izzy. God yeah. Yeah, no, she's great. She's, uh, I think if you ever need a reminder of how to live your life, just uh, think about what, what would the dog do? And then just channel that energy. <laughs> it was really nice to have another point of view and it was a surprise to see uh, Doug running. So it's so, yeah, interesting. It's nice. <laughs> He's not always in a cafe or behind a computer. <laughs> yeah, sure.
That's really nice. <laughs> nice point of view. Well, great. Um, really nice work, guys. Uh, so the last film that we're going to be watching um, is another shorter one. It is The Reality of Trail Running by uh, Milo Zanikia. And um, I would actually just love to read aloud the great description that he wrote. Um, maybe it'll be weird for you if I read your words. Um, but uh, he said, when I finish a long trail run, I'm always shocked about the difference between my elapsed time versus my moving time. And I always wonder what I spent that extra time doing. I used to think it was wasted time. And now I know it's part of the adventure. This film is a portrait of a real day out, not just the memorable, perfect single track on the ridge we all love. I'm constantly framing images and noticing the infinite sounds around us. So this project brings to light what I'm seeing and hearing and hopefully works as a reminder to get out regardless of the conditions or your fitness and enjoy roaming around in the outdoors. I love that description, Milo, and I actually was channeling it a little bit today uh, because it was like spitting rain, snow, slush kind of, and I was like, yep, yep, I got to get out anyway, and took the time to really like sort of think about all of the, you know, everything that was around me. So anyway, hopefully you guys will also like it. So we're going to put on, it's about three minutes long, the reality of trail running. Love it, Milo. Yeah, so good. <laughs> really, really wonderful. Milo, that, that was great. I absolutely love the soundscapes. I should have said before, like, turn it up. Give yourself, like, you know, good headphones or, like, a quiet room. Um, really, really cool. I was actually curious, how did you capture that sound? Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. The sound is all done in post. It's one of those things that you can try and like <laughs> take samples from the scenes, and then there's always something like someone yelling like "Turn around, back up, wait, wait, keep running." Um, someday I'll do a separate project that's just the director's voice yelling on a project. Um, <laughs> but for this one, yeah, they're all fake fake sounds. <laughs> But you, I mean, you had me fooled. They are like really, really, it's it's an immersive experience for sure. Thanks. I feel like I say fake sounds, but the reality is, is that they're, they're as real as I could find a sound to match the moment that we were in. Um, and working on like commercial shoots and stuff, I often hire a sound designer to do something. And I'm always like hurt by the sounds they choose from their office somewhere as a non-trail runner. So I feel like this is the first project that I kind of said, okay, I'm going to try this myself. And I ended up spending more time on the sound, I think, than I did on the actual filming and, and editing of the project. I think like, I think the, the sound design really makes mm -hmm. it. Um, and yeah, I think people don't appreciate all the time how if you don't have that good quality sound, um, it, it can really, you know, it makes a film, doesn't it? I always think you can like you can put other visuals in, but if you've got like if your sound's bad, if you're doing an interview and the sound's bad, or you've got bad sound in the background, you can't. It's, it's useless. Um, so I think it's definitely something that people don't appreciate um, until you see a film like this where it's really like showcased really well. How how did you kind of make that decision of going down that clean sound design route and uh, not having music say over the top? Uh, honestly, I've been kind of dreaming of doing this project for like three or four years and kind of building on the idea. Um, and from the beginning, I, uh, I think it started from, there's a whole scene in the mountain bike world of raw 100s, they call them hundred seconds of just a mountain biker. And obviously mountain biking has a bit more, you know, excitement to the sound effects of a tire swerving or this and that. And I remember thinking that, uh, I haven't seen, maybe there's something else out there similar to it, but a trail running version of that, where we just emphasize um, those sounds. So I feel like I've been I've been building on them in my head on a little list for years, but also asking friends, what are those moments that you laugh at after a run or this and that? And and what's the sound effect that matches that? So I kind of built the story around. I wouldn't shoot a scene unless there was a unique sound to it so that we didn't just have footsteps running the entire film. You know, that's cool. I think, yeah, that's a really interesting like direction to take um, by choosing scenes where 
maybe the visual doesn't take precedent it's the sound and I mean obviously that like, the sound is is great but it's it is complemented by amazing visuals um and I was kind of interested from a like directing point of view did you have an idea of a shot list or did you go out and just see what you thought in the moment and captured it um we had made a rough list um as every project goes you scout the area you want to shoot in and you have all these plans and then everything shifts last minute so you're kind of improvising but we had a general area that i wanted to shoot this in and then we just went down this list and we we're like okay there's an outhouse let's let's shoot that you know the bathroom scene there but i had like an idea of her like squatting behind a tree originally um or you know just the electrical wire climbing over I feel like that's like the story of my life in my part of the Alps at least is every run you're stopping every four minutes to duck under a fence or touch it to see if it's on or not you know and um just constantly dodging your way around so I, to answer your question we just had a list and then I tried to hit as many of those items as I could in this two-day window we had in the mountains to, to work nice can I ask what area of the mountains it was yeah, it's on the uh, Newfoundland Pass. It's between um, kind of the Ticino Canton and uh, Valle, I think, or um, the Obergams Valley, basically, once you descend off the other side. Um, I'm going to regret that if I just messed up the uh, the other <laughs> side of the valley here. <laughs> well, great. I actually wanted to rebound one other thing. Have any of you guys seen the film by Kyle uh, Richardson called Tempo, which is a trail running film? He's a, also, uh, he's a, a teammate of mine, but he's also a black diamond athlete and, and a percussionist. And so he just came out with a second film, Tempo 2, um, but it's uh, the entire film is done in movements um, of music that he wrote himself. Nice. That sounds really cool. I think that like thinking of different ways or different inspirational things like that that you can then base your film around is is just is great. Um and I think you don't often get time to indulge in those like passion ideas. Um so yeah, it's nice to, but nice to have a space to do that in. So just to wrap things up, I'm not actually going to spare you the thing that we usually end around the Alps rendezvous with, which is a lightning round of questions. They will have nothing to do with your films. Uh, well, actually, the first one, and I'd love for every person to answer, which is your favorite mountain or trail running film, if you have one already. And I'll, I'll just call you out. Uh, <laughs> uh, Simon, ton film de montagne ou de trail préféré? In all the life or just in this festival? For, no, forever. No, I'm not going to make you choose between the three of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for me, I'm more in skiing films, but uh, trail running. I remember I was watching a film about uh, Gillian Jonets back in the days. Mm. Yeah. I don't know the name of the film. <laughs> It could, he's done a lot, but uh, there's some good, the early ones from uh, Seb Montaz were really great. Yeah, I think so when he was in his caravan and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Kate? Um, oh, God, I think, well, favorite mountain, it's, guy. I don't know how you choose this, but the one that always, I always kind of say if someone asks me is, oh. mountain. That is film. Oh, I think it's a bit mountain or favorite trail running film. I thought it was like two separate things. Uh, no, I meant mountain oh. film or trail running film. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Tell us oh. your favorite mountain, though. <laughs> well, like, oh, uh, it's the one that's uh, one up behind my house because um, <laughs> it, it has really good views on both sides and I can see my house from the top. So that's always nice. Um, maybe you should make a film about it. Maybe I should. <laughs> I've, I've got a film, though. <laughs> um there I think yeah it must have been Salomon did it um uh, quite a few years ago now called I think uh of, of Fells and Hills uh it's got Ricky it's a Ricky Gates um stars in it and it's set mainly in the Lake District uh and a bit in Scotland as well uh, and it's just a beautiful film and uh, it kind of goes and speaks to some legendary fell runners in the area uh and I, I love like the the parting message right at the end uh, he kind of talks about how for these like local fell running legends, their fells in 
Uh, so when I say fell, I mean like mountains and hills, right? Uh, so they're hills in their backyard. Like that's enough for them. They don't feel the need like Ricky does to go and travel here, there and everywhere and um, see lots of different things. And he kind of parts saying he kind of wishes that was enough for him as well. I thought it's quite a cool message. That is cool. How about you, Milo? I'm I'm torn. I've been <laughs> like half listening, half like worrying about my answer here. Um, <laughs> but I would say if I had to really pick one, there's a film that I saw at BAM Film Festival a few years ago called Ice and Palms. I'm not sure if some of you have heard of it, but it's just two German guys uh, cycling across the Alps from Germany to Monaco. Um, and they're bikepacking in the spring and ski touring up peaks and skiing down, reloading the bikes, carrying their bikes over, you know, roads that have been plowed yet getting back on and it's them for 30 days just roughing it and I feel like living adventure to the to the fullest and I think that for me is a film that really just said get out and do whatever you can with whatever equipment you have and have to have a start and an end point in mind and just figure out the rest along the way because you can spend the year kind of like I feel like I get lost sometimes just trying to plan the perfect trip instead of just going for it so um, I was originally going to say uh, Summits of My Life by Seb Montez as well. Um, I think that's what Simon was referring to, maybe. But that had a huge kind of impact for me in the trail running world and made me really fall in love with the sport and, and go for it, both from a filmmaking and uh, trail running aspect. Well, thank you. So these next questions will be a little bit faster. Uh, <laughs> but so... Uh, all of you guys have said that you you run and you love trail running, but what is your favorite mountain sport? Milo. Um, you're picking me first, okay. Uh, I'm going the opposite order. I want to give the cheap answer that it depends on the, the season. I have like a favorite sport per season, but uh, if I could pick one season all year round, it would probably be uh, ski touring where I'm a split boarder. So that's my just trying to beat other skiers, you know, proving that splitboarders can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, splitboarding. How about you, Kate and Sam? Um, yeah, again, seasonal, but I think one for all year would be biking. Mountain biking, gravel biking, road biking. It's got two wheels, it's good. <laughs> uh, I'm exactly the same as Milo. Like, yeah, seasonal, but if I had, if I had to do th one thing for the rest of my life, it would be ski touring. Yeah, I I do love skiing, but I also love to do other new sports, like mm -hmm. biking and surfing. Biking and surfing. All right, this one will be quick, and I'll start with Simon. Comté or Gruyère? <laughs> Come on, Gruyère, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what a silly question. <laughs> or give me uh, Comté or Beaufort. Uh, Sam, can you... I don't eat cheese. Oh, <laughs> ah, the vegans. <laughs> How about you, Milo? I'm a confident Gruyere as well. All right. Uh, and the next one is in your next life, would you rather be a chamois or a chocard? The chocard is the alpine chuff, black bird, yellow beak. Chuff, chuff all the way. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I go chuff. <laughs> Milo? Same, same here, for sure. Sorry. Would you be, Simon, a chamois or a chocard? Uh, the bird, just to fly. All right. Well, that was very unanimous. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be a chamois myself, but. Uh... <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for joining me um, and sharing your films, pouring your hearts into them. Uh, I want to thank uh, Alexandra Yanyak, who is taking care of the video and the technical challenges making this rendezvous possible. Thanks, uh, Milo, Sam, Kate, Simon. Um, we will make sure to have links to your own websites and stuff in the show notes. And thanks to our audience for tuning in. So uh have a great i guess for us it's the evening now uh and happy trail running <laughs>